State football team traveled to Waco, Texas to take on the Baylor Bears this week. Iowa State fell down 20 to nothing, but rallied all the way back in the fourth quarter to take the lead 21-20. Unfortunately, Baylor hit a last second field goal to take the win. Baylor 23, Iowa State 21. The Iowa State women's volleyball team traveled to Austin, Texas to take on the number six Texas Longhorns. Despite being down two starters, they fought hard, eventually losing to the Longhorns three sets to one. Cyclone Insiders starts now. Welcome to Cyclone Insiders. I'm your host, Ben Olson, joined with John Miller and newcomer, Jared Brevard. We're here to talk some Cyclone sports. Guys, a tough week for Cyclone sports all around, really. Let's start off with football, obviously. Just talked about they went to Waco, lost on that last second field goal. Iowa State's gotten a trend going on of coming out with slow starts. Uh, what are your initial thoughts on that game? John, why don't you start? Um... Well, obviously, I mean, the slow start, especially as a fan watching the game, it was like, you know, you almost couldn't watch it to a certain point because it was like, you know, when are we going to score eventually? But right when that fourth quarter started, it was like something something just was different all of a sudden in the offense, and we, we seemed to be scoring. I mean, earlier in the game, it was like we were moving the ball, but then we were just stopped. And then now it was like, oh, well, they're finishing drives, and that's what, I mean... Obviously, we had 21 unanswered points, and it was a new ball game all of a sudden. So it'll be interesting to see if Iowa State can, you know, continue that fourth quarter team and not the first three quarters. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. I think they're going to have to change some things up so that they can't dig themselves in a hole like that. Exactly. Jared, what did you think watching that game? Were you frustrated? Yeah, it was definitely a tough start there. First three quarters, showing nothing, nothing on the points scoreboard there. It's not what you want to see as, a, as an offense that has shown it's, it's been efficient, mm -hmm. uh, above average proficiency at times. And, you know, not scoring in the fourth quarter, it's hard to be in the game and put yourself in position to win the game. And they were able to do that, but just fell a little short. Yeah, I think uh, you look at how many times Iowa State crossed the 40-yard line or 50-yard mm -hmm. line of Baylor's, and uh, they couldn't score points. You know, they had that turnover on downs and then, of course, the interception you got to finish drives like that because those are the drives that aren't allowing your defense to rest because yeah. it was a great defensive performance by our yeah. team, really. I mean, holding Baylor to 20 points, they had in a crazy amount of three and outs uh, against Baylor's offense. I think towards the end there, they just got worn down, and that's what resulted in Baylor being allow allowed to drive down and kick that field goal there at the end. Uh, but, you know, it's tough to linger on Big 12 play in a tough conference like this. So Iowa State drops to 2-2 two and two on the year. And now we got TCU coming in, a team that just looked really good against Kansas. They're 3-1 and one on the season. That's at home on Saturday. So, of course, uh, Iowa State's been 8-0 and oh in October under the last two seasons with Matt Campbell. Uh, looking at what you saw in that Baylor game, what do they need to change heading into the TCU game to come away with a win in this one? John? I... Obviously, need to start a little bit better. But other than that, I, I would personally just like to see m more. I, it seems like the team doesn't have a control always of the offense. Or I shouldn't say the team, but Campbell, the way he's calling plays at times, it's like the, we, the team is not moving the ball the way it should be at, at certain points. And it's like I think they need to get more of a consistent play calling, whether that be, you know, It'd be like first down, second down, run, and then all of a sudden third down, we're in a position where we have to throw the ball. The defense knows what we're going to do. So I would just like to see that more going into the next game and heading forward. Jared, what do you think they need to change up as they head to play TCU? Obviously, you got to finish some of those drives early on in the game. Get some points on the scoreboard. Uh, I can't wait till the fourth quarter to score. And I'd also look for uh, less self-inflicted wound uh, coming in because all those drives that seem to kind of sputter, First three quarters, there was kind of one thing on every drive, whether it be a penalty or a turnover, that just seemed to kind of hold up the Iowa State offense. Yeah, no, I think that's a good point. I mean, Coach Campbell talks about it all time, all the time. He brings up attention to detail, 
And you know, you'd like to think that little details wouldn't make that big of a deal in our game, but when you're playing, when you're Iowa State and you're playing football, I think it's always going to be a big deal how uh, how well you execute. And so Iowa State has just been really bad in the turnover difference this year. I think they're like minus five, maybe six on the mm -hmm. season, and they've been really bad on stopping teams at third down. So as good as our defense has looked. They, uh, they need to be able to get off the field, and our offense needs to be able to keep them off the field by sustaining a drive and not turning it over. So if the Cyclones can uh, finally start to put in some long drives, I think that's going to be important against TCU because you know that they like to get their up-tempo offense going. we got some score predictions, guys. Iowa State right now is a three-and-a-half point favorite. Uh, Jared, we'll start with you. Who do you think is going to win Saturday, TCU and Iowa State? I do like the Cyclones to win here at home uh, in Jack Trice. I do like them to cover that three and a half as well. Uh, I'll say 31-24 Cyclones. like that pick. John, how about you? Roll Clones, baby. I'm going 14-point, 17-point win over TCU. Nice. Also picking them to cover. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say I, it's going to be a close game. I think it will be more low scoring. I'm going to go Iowa State 21, TCU 17, which of course would mean that Iowa State covers I think uh, Matt Campbell's going to get this team to rally, play some good October football like they always do. And it's still a long season. You know, in the Big 12, losing your first game is not that big of a deal. I think it doesn't uh, take away from what our ultimate goal is at the end of the season, and that's to, you know, get in a bowl game. Uh, so now, with that being said, I think it's time to go into our second week of the Cyclone Insiders Pick'em Series. You'll see here at the bottom our records from last week. If you can put that in. I went 2-2. Two and two, John went 2-2. Two and two. Of course, we had Dylan picking. But Jared's going to take his shot at it this week. We've got a tough slate of games as Big 12 play is finally into full swing. All 10 teams are playing. So we'll start off with the easy one. Oklahoma supposed to beat Kansas at Kansas by 35 points. John, are they going to cover? Yep. Or is Kansas going to show up like maybe you thought last week? Oh, no. Oklahoma's definitely going to cover. I mean... Last week, we saw them throttle Texas Tech. I mean, at this point, Oklahoma doesn't it, it doesn't even seem like they're playing competition. So we'll see how that goes this week. Jared, what do you think? Yeah, I'll second what uh, John said there. 35 seems like a lot, but this Oklahoma offense just seems unstoppable so far. Yeah, they have looked scary good lately with Jalen Hurts, obviously the front runner for the Heisman. I think Oklahoma is going to annihilate Kansas. Les Miles hasn't really seemed to gotten in, be, have gotten anything going there yet. Let's go on to the next one. Oklahoma State is traveling to Texas Tech, where they're a nine-and-a-half-point favorite. Of course, Oklahoma State with a pretty impressive showing last week against Kansas State. Jared, Oklahoma State going to cover there? I do like Oklahoma State in this game. They showed a lot showed a lot of impressive things uh, last week in the game against K-State, so give me Okie State. What about you, John? I'm actually going to go with the Red Raiders on this one. I think they're going to have a bounce-back week. Um, although they did not... I, by the score, it looked like they did not play well against Oklahoma. There were certain things that they did well, so I would expect them to, you know, build on those things going into this week and not not necessarily come out on top against Oklahoma State, but I do think 10 is a little bit generous. I think this is a tough pick because I think Texas Tech always plays pretty well in Lubbock, but I'm going to agree with Jared here. I think Oklahoma State is going to run away with it at the end. They'll wear them down. I think, I think Oklahoma State's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the Big 12 this year. They've, they've been looking better than Iowa State has so far this season, yeah. unfortunately. If, all right, we're moving on. Texas favored by 11.5 at West Virginia. I'll start. I think West Virginia has looked pretty terrible this year, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Yeah. Texas, uh, I, I, th I see them going and just kind of wearing down West Virginia in this game. I think they're going to cover. I see like a 14-point victory. What about you, Jeff? I think it's pretty obvious that Texas is just a way more talented team, and you know I'd expect them to cover 11 and a half pretty easy. Jared? Yeah, I agree with both of you guys. Uh, Texas just going to be too good for the Mountaineers. All right, now we have possibly the toughest game in the Big 12 Conference this week. Besides Iowa State, TCU, Baylor at Kansas State. Baylor obviously getting some respect now. I think a lot of people had Iowa State favored last week. So Baylor at Kansas State. Kansas State coming off that tough loss, but favored by two still at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Jared, who do you got in this one? I actually have Baylor in this one. Okay. Uh, they were very impressive last week. K-State kind of tripped over themselves here at starting conference play, and even though it is in Manhattan, I still like Baylor to come out and cover that. What about you, John? K 
K-State bounce back I like this week. Um, you know, the Baylor offense towards the end of the game, I just felt like they, you know, almost the pressure of the moment once you started to come back really got to them. And I would expect them on the road in Kansas State to get flustered early. So that way Kansas State, you know, I didn't expect it to be close, but I think Kansas State is going to come out in the end. I'm going to agree with you there, John. I think Kansas State is going to bounce back. Uh, I think Baylor had the advantage of playing at home in that heat mm-hmm. against Iowa State. So I like Kansas That's State cool. to get back on track with a win in this one and cover, minus two. Yeah. Of course, we all hope our picks are right, but more importantly, we hope our Cyclones show up this weekend mm-hmm. against TCU. That's a really big game for Iowa State. Would hate to see them to drop below 500. So come out and support your Cyclones at Jack Trice Stadium at 11 a.m., We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk a little Iowa State volleyball. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Cyclone Insiders. Welcome back to Cyclone Insiders. Jumping into some Iowa State volleyball now. They're sitting at a 9-4 record so far on this year, but they just started Big 12 Conference play. Coming off of that big 3-2 win in Iowa City, they had to travel all the way to Austin, Texas to face the number 6 Texas Longhorns. Guys, that's a brutal first draw for your first Big 12 game. Iowa State was uh, down their starting setter, Piper Mock, as well as freshman standout libero, Mikkel Schuler, uh, both out with injuries for Iowa State. So they ended up falling to the Texas Longhorns 3-1 to one in that match. Uh, but you saw a lot of positive things. I think the fact that they didn't get swept against a team of this magnitude is a really positive sign for such a young team moving forward. Of course, Iowa State hit uh, 268 while they actually held Texas to only hitting 30 311 percentage so that's down from what texas was averaging so far on this year uh guys what did you think of their performance obviously uh josie Earp stepped up avery Rhodes. john you think uh, that's going to help this iowa state team as they move into the rest of big 12 play is that a promising I'm, performance i mean there's always those what ifs if the, the two freshmen would have played but at the same time um i think obviously you know you can you can always take positives from losses, and I think, you know, I would say definitely showed glimpses of potential, of being, you know, the top two team in the Big 12 in that game. But at the same time, you know, against a Texas Longhorns team like that, if they're going to make the tournament, they're going to be going up against that kind of competition night in, night out. So, I mean, you, you, really, you really just got to take what you can out of the game and not put too much into it, so... What about you, Jared? Uh, did you think some players stepped up? Were you impressed with uh, the way Iowa State handled, considering how young this team is? Yeah, I like how uh, Jenna Brandt stepped in uh, for Piper there. Uh, Piper, obviously, a foundation of the team uh, as the main setter. Uh, Brandt came in, she had 41 assists, uh, showing that, that she can come in and, and fill that role for the Cyclones. That was very, very nice to see. Yeah, I agree. That was a positive. Brandt, of course, didn't get as much playing time as some of the other freshmen last year. It was nice to see her step in and kind of embrace that role. Um, and Avery Rhodes, the senior, also had 10 kills, team best three blocks. So, and Josie Earps as well, 15 kills. So you saw those two seniors step up, which is something you like to see out of a team that really is pretty young guys. We've got the mm-hmm. stat right here. Four freshmen this year have already played in over 29 or more sets uh, for the Cyclones. So do you think that this team's youth is going to be a factor throughout the rest of the Big 12? Or do you see like people like Mikkel Schuler? she's got a nasty serve, you guys, mm-hmm. leading the team in aces. Do you think uh, they're going to be able to hang with the rest of the Big 12? I, I think that youth can either hinder your team or you can build on it. And so far this team, they've showed that they, they really came together. I mean, even in the Texas game, you know, winning the set, that, that's something to build off of. So heading forward, you know, I think it's going to help them out tremendously, not even only this year, but heading into the next couple of years because, you know, they're only going to get better. Yeah, I agree with that. What do you think, Jared? I'm not too concerned about the youth of the Cyclones. Uh, they got, obviously, a couple upperclassmen that are good leaders throughout the way in there. And then, uh, you know, Kirsty Johnson Lynch always got the Cyclones ready for conference play. So I think... Yep. I think they've got a lot of good leaders right. helping them out. And let's not forget like the names like Eleanor Holthouse and County Herrera. So they are really in good hands. Annie Hatch, the freshman, at some solid height to go with those two. So I think it's just more about kind of getting that team chemistry down. And uh, we'll start to see some more of that as they move back to Hilton this Wednesday to play Kansas, who's 4-7 and seven on the year. 0-1, they also lost their Big 12 opener. That game will be at Hilton tomorrow night. You guys think uh, Iowa State's going to bounce back with a win in this one? 
I think so. I think they're just better team than Kansas overall. And, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that losing to Texas is, like, you know, a must-win game by any means because it's oh, definitely not. Oh, of course not. not. Yeah, Texas. But, but it, it, it'll def, it's definitely, you know, especially the, the youth, it can be, you know, kind of like a, I would say, a welcoming to the Big 12. Like, you know, oh, this is what we're going to expect or this is what we're going to see from the top two teams. So, I mean, against Kansas, they're I, after what they just saw, I wouldn't expect a challenge, really. Jared, you see Iowa State bouncing back with a win tomorrow? I do, yeah. Coming back after a long couple road stretch games there, it's, it's going to be good to be back in, uh, in Hilton there and have the crowd behind them and get their first conference win. I agree. I think Kansas is definitely having a down year. I think uh, it's a very winnable game. And then after that, they'll Travis to West Virginia, that's a place they could pick up a two-game win streak there, I think. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they have to play Baylor back here at home. That's, that'll be a big test for them to see how they've improved from playing at Texas to Baylor because, of course, yep. Baylor also always very good. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be back next week with some more Cyclone Sports. you guys have anything else you want to add that you saw from Iowa State Athletics this week? Just uh, a little bit about the, the Iowa game. Uh, the volleyball went up 2-0. Showed a good start to the game. Dropping the next two, stayed calm and collected, and were able to play well with the back against the wall there and pull the win out. That was very, uh, very nice to see the Cyclones do that. And that was a big win for the Cyhawks series as well. Something mm -hmm. that Iowa State really needed. I I guess I as far for the football side of things, I just want to see some more. I mean, Maybe some consistency out of the running back position. I mean, we had the third start, third different starting running back of the season. Um, I, I that was a big concern for the team coming into the year, and obviously the rushing game, you know, hasn't been at what it was in the past. But Purdy's definitely stepped up this year. So I guess this week I definitely just want to, you know, I want to have that breakout rushing week. I don't want to have Purdy have to throw up a 350, 400 yards for us to win a game. So, you know, I like to see that. I also agree with that. Running by committee something that Iowa State fans really aren't used to after having Montgomery. Hey, the most important thing is, guys, we didn't have to talk about bands. We didn't have to talk about uh, signs or Twitter or anything like that. We just got to talk about sports. I'm excited to just be back to playing Iowa State athletics. And uh, we hope you guys are as well. Hope to see you out there this weekend cheering on the Cyclones and tomorrow night for volleyball. That's all we have for this edition of Cyclone Insiders. See you back next Tuesday at 9. Go Clones.